Welcome to this video tutorial on how to create metallic PBR materials in Rhino 8. In this video I'm going to be making a series of different metal materials from rusted to shiny metals to perforated metals which we're going to be applying to these simple cubes here. Once we've created those base materials we're then going to scale it up and apply it to a larger architectural scene so we can see how these materials might look when you apply them together. Now to begin this tutorial, we're first going to switch to a rendered viewport so we can see the materials as we create them. As you can see here, I've just got a simple sunlight that's shining on these cubes and we've also got a kind of background sky which we've mapped as a background texture so we can start to see it in the reflections. From here, I'm going to go into my render tools and we're going to click this little paint tube here which is our materials panel to open up our materials. You can also find this by typing materials into the command line. Now in order to make my first material, I'm going to click on this little add material button and we're going to add in a physically based material. This is opposed to a metal material which actually doesn't have as many features as our physically based and we're going to be using the physically based material for the majority of this tutorial. Here we can add in different maps that start controlling these objects based upon those physical qualities and that's what kind of gives us our PBR, our physically based rendering, um, which allows us to render from these photographs to really match a reality when we're creating our materials. Once we've created that, I'm going to select my first cube, right click on that material and hit assign to objects to assign that to here. Now you won't see any difference at the moment, but you will get a little yellow square which tells us we're looking at the selected material right now and in order to start to give this that metallic quality we're then going to go to the detailed settings and we're going to add this sub setting tab of base color metallic and roughness in here you can see we've got a metallic parameter which is set to zero but if we ramp it all the way up to one we're going to get a perfectly shiny chrome material and if we kind of zoom in you can kind of see that it's reflecting the sky a little bit there it's reflecting also other objects around it so we've got a really sort of shiny almost mirror finish material now the kind of shininess or the sharpness of those reflections is determined by the second tab below the metallic which is the roughness tab a roughness of zero will give us a perfectly shiny finish whereas a roughness of one will give us a very matte material now you might not be able to see this very clearly in your kind of render preview so it's sometimes good if you can't really accurately see it to go up to render and hit render preview here to test what it looks like when it actually renders out you'll find that the render preview is a lot more accurate and we can see we're getting the reflection of that cube in there we're also getting the shadow of that cube on there too and we can see the reflection of the sky around the cube as well so it's a little bit more accurate a preview here and you'll find when we start to add other colors into these cubes when they're not white anymore we're going to see that reflection in a lot more detail now that's how you might make a perfect chrome material but often materials like metals have kind of scratches dents and other imperfections that really make them look realistic to do that we're actually going to go online and i'm going to go to polyhaven here and have a look at their metal materials and we're going to download a few of the maps here that we're going to use to give our metals a little bit more of that kind of rusty or imperfect quality on this i'm going to download this rusty metal material and also this rust coarse material that's going to give us another sort of really rusty metal that we're going to use here and to download those you just need to select the object and hit the download button I'll put links in the description of this video where you can also download these maps and it will link to this website. Once you have those, I'm going to go back into my metal and I'm not actually going to change the kind of initial color of this metal. I still want it to be shiny and silver, but I want to add a little bit of imperfection to the way the metal is kind of picking up that roughness. So it's going to be slightly dull in some places and slightly shiny in others. That's going to give us that nice kind of patina, that kind of metal imperfections that we're looking for. To do that, under the roughness tab, I'm going to click on this folder here. I'm going to go into that rusty metal and I'm going to use one of these textures here. Now I'm going to use the ambient occlusion option here, this AO, and what this will do is wherever this material is light, it's going to give it a rust value of a kind of higher value on that roughness and whenever it's dark it's going to give it a lower value so what this will mean is that the darker parts are going to be more shiny and the whiter parts are going to be more matte now if you want to sort of slightly tweak this we can always lower down this multiplier value and if we make this a lower value it's actually going to make the image a lot darker 
So the lower it is, the actually the shinier the metal will be. And if we put this, let's say, on a 0.4, for instance, you can kind of see it's getting even shinier in my preview here. Now again, it's still quite hard to see, but you can kind of get it from this angle, where you can see certain parts of that metal are really shiny, and other parts are much more dull. And again, if we just go into the render preview here, we can start to see that a little bit more accurately as it's slightly kind of diffusing that reflection there. Now you find with a white cube it's really hard to see the reflections here so what we're going to do is we're also going to make a brand new material and we're going to make a rusty cube next to it so we can see that comparison. So I'm going to make a new physically based, I'm going to call this one rust as opposed to this one which we'll call metal and under that rust material again I'm going to go to the detailed settings, I'm going to add in a base color and under base color we're just going to hit that folder option, I'm going to go back to my downloads where I've downloaded that Rust course, that one we were looking at from Polyhaven, which was this one here, back in Rhino, and we're going to just drop on this rusty tone just as a base color in there. Once we've added this, you'll see it's going to help us kind of determine what the reflection is doing on the cube next to it. So we're going to select that and we're just going to right click and assign it to this cube here. Now you won't notice any difference in the preview. But if we go back into our actual render preview and quickly load this up, you'll then see we're going to get that nice reflection of that red cube in there. And you can actually see what's happening here, where certain parts of the cube are being reflected and certain parts are not there. And it's got that kind of nice diffused reflection as we've got going on. Now, what I also want to add to this initial metal is I want to add some actual dents and scratches. So it feels like the metal is slightly uneven on the surface. To do this, we're going to go back to the detail setting and we're going to load in a bump normal and displacement map. This essentially can tailor the sort of surface of the object and make it look like light is bumping off it in different ways to make it look slightly more imperfect. Under that, I'm going to go back to that original rusty metal texture and we're going to load in this pink purpley map here, which is a normal map, which essentially gives us a little bit of that surface imperfection. This is based on a color, so it has a color variation from sort of purples to pinks, which will change the way light bounces off the material based upon the color of the map. Now, if I add this in, it might take a little bit of time to load, but what you'll see in this preview is it's quite subtle, but we're gonna to start to get a little bit more of that surface imperfection on there. Now, the amount of imperfection we get, if we click on the back tab here, it's all based upon this percentage. So under the bump and normal, we've got our metal input here, and then we've got this value. If I put this up, let's say to 100, you're gonna really see it, and we can see that bumpiness in there. And then actually, if we click that render button again, the render preview, you'll see that that effect is quite strong on that metal, and we've got that really sort of bumpy surface on there. Now, actually, I don't want it to be that strong in this particular case. I want it to be a lot lower because I'm going to make the next kind of a rusty metal much more bumpy. So we're going to set this down to a value of 15% instead, which is going to sort of dampen it a bit. So it's very subtle, but it's just giving it that nice bumpiness value. What we're going to do while we're setting that is we're also going to go back to the rust cube. We're going to add in one of those bumper normal as well. And we're going to go back to that particular rust course texture, add in that normal map, and this time we're going to up this one to a lot higher degree. So instead of 30, I'm going to put this one on 100 here. So we're just going to click back, type in 100%, and that's going to make it really bumpy. And you can kind of see it there as we sort of pan around the object. As a final setting for this rusty cube, we're going to go in and we're going to add the roughness to it as well. And we're just going to base that on the map there. This one doesn't have a metallic option because it's actually so rusty, you're not getting any of those metallic treatments. So now if we then do a render preview of both of those, you'll see the difference of these two materials. One being super bumpy and rough on the right, and the other being a little bit smoother, but still getting a little bit of that bumpiness, that bit of that imperfection that we can see in the reflections there. So that's our sort of two initial metals. The last one I want to make is a perforated metal. And we're actually gonna base that off this original metal here. To do that, I'm just gonna right click. We're gonna duplicate 
that metal just by duplicating there. And we're going to rename this as a sort of perforated there, like so. Then we're going to just apply that again to our last cube. And to add that perforation, we're going to go back to the detailed settings and we're going to click on this opacity tab. When you do this, it will automatically set your opacity to a 0.2, which we don't want because it makes it semi-transparent, as you can see here. So we're going to dial that back up to 1. Then we're going to go to the alpha map here. We're going to click on this folder and I'm going to go back and I'm going to load in this texture here into that alpha map. Now this is literally just a black and white texture of black dots on a white background. And what this is going to do is it's going to cut out anywhere that's black and it's going to leave solid anywhere that's white. This will essentially create a perforated look to the texture. It's going to give us that perforation just through our maps here. We're not going to need to change the model in any way. All we're doing is inputting that map. And you can see there that those perforations are coming through quite nicely. Now you can input any black and white map into this opacity or this alpha tab here and it will cut that out for you. So you could make your own custom perforations, you could use these, you could make smaller kind of square perforations as well. Anything that's a black and white image will work in this way. Then if we go back to the render preview we can have a look at what all of those look like together once they're all added on. So there you can see our solid metal, our kind of rusty metal and then our perforated metal as a final option there. So now we've created these three materials, I'm now going to add them onto a larger scene. If we double click here, you can see I've got a scene that I've already set up in my file. Now we're going to add this perforation to this base piece just by assigning it to objects. We're going to also add it to these ones here. You might find when you add these in, let's just deselect that that the mapping of these is a little bit off, so you can always just select them, go into the Properties tab, go into your texture mapping here. I'm going to select box mapping for this. To start with, usually I just draw out a box, which I want the sort of rough size of my texture to be, like so, hit Enter. And then once you've got that, you can then go in this XYZ size and start to fine tune it. And I'm just going to make this two by two in terms of a map size. I'm going to add the rusty metal to these beams here. Now these are all on the same layer, so I can right click on that, assign it to a layer, and I'm going to click it on the beams. And then we'll just add our first metal to these elements as well. So we've got a few different objects which we're adding them into. And there you can see we've got our nice perforations, we've got our beams, and we've got our metal pieces here. Now to see what these all start to look like when they come together, let's just pick sort of view of all of these then we're just going to go up to render and load up that render preview again and there you can start to see these coming together nicely now with these materials what works really well is when you're starting to get them reflecting one another so you can see this metal picking up parts of the ground here it's picking up bits of the structure that's being reflected in these imperfections also on the kind of perforated bits we can start to see below and see the structure of the elements below as well. So you get these really nice kind of moments where you can start to layer these materials up and that's where the sort of strength of these settings really come in. You can create very detailed materials really quickly which have perforations, reflections and all of these qualities that start to build up realistic looking scenes. Now I hope you found this video tutorial useful. This was just a quick video going through how to create metallic PBR materials in Rhino 8. If you want to watch any other videos on creating materials or drawings in Rhino, please do check out the videos on the channel. And I'll also be uploading more videos on creating materials in Rhino and other rendering softwares as well. Thanks for watching.